Let's turn our attention to the Canadian Premier League and we finish our journey from coast to coast as we do our CPL deep dive. And I'm going to give all of the honours of starting this conversation off because we end East Coast Halifax Wanderers and we know that they brought in a new head coach, Ollie, from League One Ontario. We're going to get to the um, subtractions and additions to this team. But uh, how do you think their style of play is going to change under Patrice? I feel like we've only ever really known this team as Stephen Hart's. Yeah, well, I, I think it's kind of the easy comparison, maybe a bit of a lazy comparison to do, but I think there is something to it when you look at Patrice's you know, experience in, in League One, the way I think his teams try to play football. There is a bit of a Bobby Smoniotis parallel there where you're going to see one in terms of recruitment. Jordan has talked about this a lot. He's going to give opportunities to, to League One players, to young Canadian players who are looking to, to make that breakthrough to the pro game. And, and I think their season is, is kind of going to live and die by the way those players are able to step up to the CPL level. And then I think there's also going to be a real change in terms of the style of football and, and the tactical identity. You know, this is a coach, again, a bit like Bobby, who will want his teams to control the game with the ball. You know, to play in, in in a very structured way, I think, in terms of, you know, the positional play that they try and implement, again, particularly in possession. You're going to start to see maybe fullbacks inverting into midfield and, and different things like that that you wouldn't have necessarily seen, I think, with a more um, a, a Halifax team under Stephen Hart that I think was more about defensive structure more than attacking structure and then giving players a lot of freedom in attack. I think there's going to be more more specific kind of attacking ideas under, under, under Patrice. Um, that he'll try to implement. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Like th this, this is a club that obviously off the off the field has knocked it out of the park on it. Besides that one short bubble season where they went to the final, um, they've not replicated the same kind of success. So it's it's a big turning point, I think, in club history how this goes. Yeah, Jordan, you're familiar with Patrice. What do you think? What kind of style do you think he'll bring? Well, he's promised attacking football um, to undoubtedly the best fan base in the league go to Halifax so close to the pitch they want to see their team play attractive football I think in the past they've been fortunate with uh having penalties and scoring that way but the last two seasons that I played in they were the the team that had the the lowest scoring uh throughout the seasons so they need to come with an attacking style football that intrigues, that gets the, the university people that live there behind them, that gets everyone that's there. They, they have 5,000 showing up to games. You want people cheering and having goals. You don't want people just parking the bus when you're at home. You could do that away. But at home, when you go to, when you go to Wonders Ground, you want, you want to rally, get together. Now, look, with this squad, um, you see so many attacking players and I always I can call them threats as well, but what does that look like in a 28 game CPL season? Because there are ebbs and flows. They're not all the time where you can go and attack. Uh, there there aren't all the games where you're just like, hey, this is a set way you want to play. Sometimes you have to survive. So I'm really it's really intriguing looking at this Halifax team. It's just like, can they get it going when they need to? Uh, will they be able to do that through the course of the season? And with I guess 15 that have left and having a whole new squad, will it take them a while to get it going? It's the side entering the season with the high, highest ceiling and the lowest floor. You're just not sure what we're going to get out of this group, really. I thought they did a really nice jo job at the end of last season transitioning to a much younger, uh, more dynamic back line. I thought they were pretty good. Fernandez, Campania, Omar, uh, among others, came in and really made a difference, which kind of sets the platform for this season. They still have Andre Rampersad, um, captain leader in the middle of the park but other than that a lot of new players and a lot of players coming from league one ontario so what is that gap between league one quality and canadian premier league quality and are some of these players able to step up to that level and the demands that come along with it the travel and everything else um can that gap be bridged and that, and that goes with patrice the manager as well um you know him stepping up a level to, to see what he can bring to the table there's certainly talent there's certainly intrigue when it comes to this side i think we're just gonna have to see how it plays out Wh whether you know the changes are going to they're, they're going to be sweeping in terms of the way they play but whether it's going to bring them up to the standard or some of the other top canadian premier league sides uh, quick little story that embarrasses me more than anything, Jordan, but you're talking about being a great fan base. Wanderers Grounds truly is fantastic. And, you know, when I was first learning about each of the teams, I was getting to know the names of their supporter sections. And at the time, when I went to do a game there, I didn't know yet that the supporter section there was called The Kitchen. 
and uh, Valor was in town and Halifax Valor, a little bit of bad blood. And somebody had said out loud, oh, we're, we seem to be having some issues in the kitchen. And I went, are we not getting our media meal? And I got very <laughs> concerned. <laughs> Horrible. Horrible. I'm always thinking girls, of food. Girls, knowing you, like, don't, don't mess with your food. Make I was sure so that upset. Was like, I yeah. was like, what do you oh, mean yeah. we're having issues in the kitchen? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, everyone. It's fine. Let's take a look at some of the key additions <laughs> and subtractions uh, that stand out for you, Ollie, in particular when it comes to the Wanderers. A lot of movement here. A lot of ins, a lot of outs. Um, so, you know, some really big names that we've come to know on this Halifax Wanderer squad are now gone. Um, so what do you think is, is going to be some key moves here for them, Ollie? Well, you, you look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, the out list, first of all, like yeah. some of them, the more experienced players, the leaders in the squad, Charla, Gagnon Lapare, Garcia obviously hasn't been where he's, he'd wanted to be the last couple of seasons, but we know in their history has been a big player. Salsa last season was, was kind of the main attacking threat obviously missing from that list as well, but I think you can probably put him on a permanent out at this at this point is Jean Morelli. So I, I think when you talk about like, again, Wheels talked about the difference between the, the ceiling and the floor for this team. Part of it is on the coaching and how Patrice Geyser can come in and, and impact things, but there's also going to need to be like there's certain players that I got to step up for Halifax this season because it's it's all well and good having talent and, and a ton of ability. And I think you can see that in players like Aiden Daniels and, and Wes Timoteo, like really, really gifted guys. But there's got to be a mentality, you know, a, 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 an increase in mentality to the point where these guys are expecting themselves. Like, I'm not just going to be one of those players who comes up with something once every five games, which I think was a little bit the case with Daniels last season. I'm going to impact games every single week. I'm going to be the guy, you know, one of the guys that they can build this team around. And, and I think for a lot of young players, that is going to be the challenge for some of these guys as well, is, is, is not just kind of, you know, having an influence in this league here and there, but actually having that expectation that you're you're going to be in the conversation with the Aparicios, the Borgias, the guys like that in this league who are, are true difference makers consistently and not just every now and then. Jardo? Well, well said, Ali. I think, too, with uh, Aiden Daniels taking the the, the, the 10 from John Morelli, there's expectation, brother. You can't just wear the 10 and, and be showing up every one every five games. Like, you got to yeah. be putting it in. The thing with Halifax, when I think about, even though I didn't play that season, but just being close and watching it and players that have played, talking with them, the Wanderers team wasn't the most talented team, but they were together. That little bubble period in PEI. Uh, I think that's the, the catalyst of their success going forward this season is that they have like a Timoteo, a Daniels, they have a Norfonso going forward, uh, Massimo Fair, and they have all these different pieces. But can they all contribute and get on the same page? And can they do that quickly? Have they already done that? Can they go into the season knowing that like all of us are really pedaling the same direction? Because sometimes with Halifax in the, in the past, you just didn't know what you're going to get on the day. Um, can Patrice guys, can they get them all pedaling the same direction? same way the guys that have left i think that honestly when you break down the spine um the middle with uh policia lamont like replace those guys obviously jeremy uh gagnon lapare is probably for me the best one but you can replace and have decent midfielders but if you're attacking quality with like a ryan james from a fullback and alfonso and fair and all these guys that i've mentioned if they can go and contribute uh and even if it's not their day but they're still contributing in terms of tracking back and just and and just working for the squad it could be a decent a decent year for them and i think their goal should be obviously making that playoff spot and now with five teams that that's attainable the five out of eight you could be doing that if you just have a successful run if you don't get into bad habits or losing three in a row if you can if you can bounce back quickly for sure they can do that mm -hmm. all right so wheels what are your expectations here um progression in terms of the style of play i'm not sure how much they climb the table playoffs out you're calling right now that halifax wanderers don't make the playoffs i am love it okay we'll just, just shy away from that jordan's cut on the record though no clearly. perfect i just wanted to know <laughs> yeah so he's saying no you're you you jordan are saying they could nab the fifth spot I'm saying that the fifth spot is up for grabs. I think after the first game, I, if you want me to make predictions, I will. I don't like doing it, but I will for oh, real, just to make it interesting. You just but started sure. in this industry. You don't like predictions already? Oh, man. No, you got to be in the <laughs> industry said, at least 10 years to say you can't, you're not going to do predictions. <laughs> 10 years. I'll do it. 
I'll do it, but for him to say undoubtedly that they're not there, I think that's a bit harsh. You don't know how it's going to play out. Harsh. So your I'm prediction just making is a prediction. I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen. I just I don't, don't think they are. Jordan's well, prediction. We'll keep it is, safe, I don't Jordan. Know. Don't worry. <laughs> You're learning. Highest it ceiling, all. highest ceiling, lowest floor. All said highest prediction? ceiling, sixth, lowest floor. They could be a playoff team, absolutely, but highest ceiling. They need to show me. I think right. they can be a playoff team. I just don't think they'll end up being it. Okay, I think there's five teams that are. I uh, my prediction. I'll be very clear on my prediction. I got three of last year's four playoff teams returning to the playoffs, and I got two new ones. And I think Halifax will be one of the two. Of course, you're back on the ship. It's like the show 1899. The ship just keeps on appearing. All aboard! On it. <laughs>